Hello there, my name is Tuomas, this is Sound of Free, and welcome to a new video. Last week I did my review of the Pet Sounds album. If you haven't seen that video yet, please check it out. I think it turned out pretty great. I'm still recovering from that trauma. <laughs> it was terrifying to do that, but I think I did an okay review anyhow. But this week I have something more lightweight for you. I haven't done a video like this previously, so Let's see how this turns out. If you liked this, uh, leave a comment and, you know, maybe I'll do more of this in the near future. But let's go straight into it. So I was thinking about this today as I drove uh, home back from work that the Beach Boys, while they don't like... I was talking about this with the Pet Sounds album. I feel Pet Sounds is the most solid piece of an album, just, you know, like cohesive, solid album from start to finish that the Beach Boys ever put out. I think only Dennis Wilson's Pacific Ocean Blue really comes close to it, or or I would may maybe even say that it's equal in the cohesiveness and, and, you know, just the structure and the way it flows and works perfectly. It's very similar to Pet Sounds, at least, at least in my opinion. But like when it comes to Beach Boys albums, otherwise they usually tend to have a lot of great songs, a few hits, maybe a few misses, you know, just songs that are not maybe clunkers, but just uh, in the early days they had a lot of filler, which in most cases is still good, but it is more or less filler. And then in the later years, in like the late 70s and, and you know, those those later albums they have kind of an opposite <laughs> problem when you know they they didn't really have material enough so they were just trying to come up with a full album and and it sometimes was hard for them uh, even though i think they have a bunch of great albums not just pet sounds but you know that's a talk for another video i think they are much more solid and much better in creating perfect sides of albums. So whether it's a side A or side B doesn't matter, but they have a lot of extremely strong sides. And I think that's a great topic to concentrate on today. And I have listed top five sides of albums by the Beach Boys, and they are obviously the usual suspects, but there is also a few uh, surprises, which I doubt that a lot of people can guess. So let's dive straight into it. I actually did organize them, them so that we will start from my least favorite and go to the favorite last. And you know, if you ask me tomorrow, I would give you a different list probably because there were some albums that deserve honorable mentions like, like LA for example was very close, but there is if like the, the, the issue with LA light album is that both sides have amazing songs, but they also have kind of clunkers. <laughs> so, so it's like if you just uh, structure the album differently, you would have an amazing side. But, you know, it didn't make my list. So at my number five spot, I have the Beach Boys today. Can you guess the side? Well, it's side B. And I'm kind of surprised that I put this this low on my list because in my thoughts first I thought that this has to be like probably like at the spot two or something like that two or three or maybe even first spot but then I remember that it actually does have a one cover song I'm so young and that it also ends with bull sessions with big daddy with the big daddy which isn't a song but it still is there so you know those two tracks even though like i love I, i'm so young you know don't get me wrong i think the beach boys here make it completely their own but it is still a cover and the beach boys while they were amazing at doing cover songs they are still the best when they write their own stuff and so that just has to put this down a notch, you know, it just takes it down a little bit. And same with the with the talking part at the end, with that little skit. But, you know, like, all, overall, otherwise, this side is just so cohesive, filled with great ballads, and they all fit together 
not just musically and, and you know feel wise but they just thematically and the, you know the the things that they uh, are about and that whole whole thing just just flows so well and it ends so beautifully with in the back of my mind where in my mind <laughs> the album ends and then we have that little talking skit at the end but but you know what do you think i think it's one of the great sides you know side a side a or side one it's great as well, but I prefer side two. I think that's just very close to perfect. But let's move forward. At the spot number four, we got a, maybe a bit surprise. And I'll explain before you click out of the video. That's why God made the radio. So this is the last Beach Boys album from 2012, the 50th re reunion tour you know, album that they put out, which is mostly uh, written and produced by Brian Wilson. And which side do you think I'm going to say? <laughs> well, side B, once again. But you have to realize that the side B on the vinyl is actually different from this side B that, well, on Spotify and, and streaming, you don't get the sides, but, but the streaming uh, track list and the track list on the CD is different. And the CD track list, I know that's the official one. That's the one that came out first. And that's the one I'm most f uh, familiar with. Uh, the vinyl release came a little bit uh, after the release of the CD. And I don't remember whose uh, choice it was to mess up with the, with the track listing, but I think both versions flow very well but side b on the vinyl just uh, it has one little one song that kind of puts it down once again a little bit but i love the song anyhow but side b anyhow starts off with shelter then we go into the private life of bill and sue which is not like the best song out there but i don't have any issues with it i think it's cool i like it a lot it's just not as great as the rest of the songs on this side uh, track three on side B, Strange World, amazing song, really love it. And then it flows perfectly into From There to Back Again, which is one of the best songs the Beach Boys ever put out. Same could be said of Pacific Coast Highway, which is pretty much like a uh, little tag uh, of From There to Back Again, like they just belong together so well, you know. And then we have the perfect album. Uh, closing track with Summer is Gone, which I can't wait to talk with you more about when we maybe like in 20 years get to this album uh, with my chronological album review series. Uh, but yeah, I, I hope that we get there sooner. But I love this album so much and I love this song. But anyhow, like this side is just so close to perfect once again. Just, you know, if you'd switch the private life of Bill and Sue to like I'd say even even to Daybreak Over the Ocean, I think that's a pretty good song. I think it would flow better, but you know, it is what it is. So that's why it's on my number four spot. But let's move forward. And number three, we have number three. This, is, this might be a surprise for some people. Friends. Which side would you think that I would choose? Is it gonna be side B again? Actually, no. Side one this time. Side one of Friends is just, I mean, this is perfect. If those were close to perfection, this actually is perfect. It just flows so well. Each of these tracks is just phenomenal, starting from Meant for you, little intro, 40 second long, less than 40 second long track that segues so beautifully to friends. Then we have Wake the World, which could be my fav favorite track on this side. Uh, most definitely one of my favorite tracks on this album. Be Here in the Morning, so beautifully sung. Uh, still, a little, like, I love these songs because they have very mundane themes like so different like even though in some ways you could say that this is a sequel to pet sounds 
It's once again a very much Brian Wilson centric album. He wrote a lot of the lyrics on it and 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 you know it has a very personal feeling like pet sounds. Uh, but but the themes and the subject subject matters are just so mundane. Like like wake the world about you know waking up to a new day or your friends or or just how you like to have somebody you love there next to you in the morning and you know stuff like very simple things and I love that it has a very cozy feeling when a man it's a woman that it's a little bit different type of a song in a way but I love that anyhow and then passing by which doesn't have any lyrics it's just this sort of very pet sounds esque almost like this what's that word like this it's just this wordless <laughs> Uh, and there's just this beautiful piece, uh, almost like from a movie score or something. I just love this whole side, and the whole side lasts probably probably less than ten minutes or something like this. This is a very short album, anyhow. Side B is great as well. Don't get me wrong, but it it has transcendental meditation at the end, which I love. I think it's a great song, but it's just and, and, and it's funny. It's a funny way to end this album because it's it's such a left turn. You know, it's a very Brian Wilson esque way to end an album, but you know, it just destroys the mood that the di second to last track Diamond Head creates, which which is why I prefer side one. Oh, by the way, yeah, these is some these are a lot of these are actually called side one and side two and not side A and side B. So I'm I'm mixing those terms, but you know, <laughs> you know which letter comes first and which second. So okay, so we have two left. Can you just take a moment, can, uh, try to guess what album is going to be my number two and which one is going to be number one. And say if you had even like one of these things. Uh, you know, guessed correctly. So, anyhow, number two, I actually have pet sounds. It's not my number one. And uh, oh, and by the way, yeah, I now realize that I could have technically chosen both sides for two different spots from the same album. And if so, if if some album would have taken two spots, it most likely would have been pet sounds. Because both sides, side one and side two, are both excellent. But my pick is side two, starting from God Only Knows. And then, uh, you know, I know there's an answer here today. I just wasn't made for these times. Pet Sounds, the, uh, the instrumental track, Caroline No. The flow here is just so great. It's impeccable. It's just... Uh, when you put this on, <laughs> I mean, it's... I love side one as well. All the tracks are great. I love this whole album, but I can't wait. Each time I play this, I can't wait to get to side two. That's the good stuff, you know, like when I'm getting closer to the end of side one, I'm getting excited. Like, yeah, I can finally flip it. And here comes the good stuff. You know, that's the feeling I get each time. Side two is just phenomenal. And you know, I'm, I'm not gonna say that much more about it because I just did a whole review of this album. So, you know, if you wanna hear me talk more about these tracks and this album, check out that review, that video. So, number one. Number one. Which one do you think I have over here? I'm kind of surprised by this, in a way, myself, because I was thinking that I'd put this maybe at, like, number three or something like that. But no. Nope. It's my favorite. Serves up and side B once again. The Beach Boys were really great at ending their albums. Side B of this album is just... It's better than perfect. Starting from Feel Flows, going then to Looking at Tomorrow, uh, which is my favorite Al Jardine song. It's so different from anything he ever did. And I love that live version of this song from the 80s with that rocking uh, dark tone, you know. I, I wish that there exists 
a clean recording of that live version because it rocks so hard. I want to hear that. I, I wish I could have been there to witness that, but I wasn't born yet. But I just love this track. It's great. It's so dark and I love the lyrics. I love the whole psychedelic feeling of it. It is kind of like a folk song in a way that Al likes to do, but it has that psychedelic thing going on, which I love. And the last three songs of this album written by Brian, A Day in the Life of a Tree, Till I Die and Serves Up are just phenomenal. The way they flow to each other is just so beautiful. I love each song so much and I never am able to pick my favorite. I love Day in the Life of a Tree just as much as I love Serves Up. So yeah, uh, this album is a little bit problematic, problematic otherwise. My major, my major issue, even though I like all the songs over here, my biggest issue with this album is that it doesn't have any Dennis Wilson tracks, which is such a shame because his tracks that he was proposing for this was so great. And even though I like Student Demonstration Time, I just don't think it really fits that well on this album. If you'd throw that out and include Wouldn't It Be Nice To Live Again, I don't care where that track would be, you know, on this track list, whatever, this album would be very close to pet sounds in quality, in my eyes at least, or ears. But come on, serves up side B, that's got to be on your list as well. If that's not, I want to know why. But yeah, thanks for watching, see you soon on the next one. Take care, bye bye.